One more minute till nine o'clock. Well, I am glad to be here yet again today. It is Friday, Aloha Friday, as we say, and good morning. Good morning, first grade, are you here? Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Good morning, first grade. The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The heart with sacred power gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I with all my might may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength from us rise love and thanks. Today is Friday, as I said. F R I D A Y. There's that D A Y Friday, September. S E P T. Today is September 5th. And a very good day it is so far, and a very good day I hope it shall be. Um, let's see, today is a Friday, so we're going to start with the days of the week again. Friday, tomorrow's the weekend. Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, back to Friday. Will you say it with me? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and back to Friday again. And this, of course, is the first day of Sep uh, the fifth day of September, fifth day, and Yesterday was the fourth day, September 4th, and the day before that was the third day, and before that was second day, and before that was the first day of September. So we can say one, two, three, four, five, but we can also say first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Can you say it with me? First, second, third, fourth, Fifth, and it goes on up. Sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. There's a little th at the end. You bite your tongue and say, TH makes. So, one more time. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth. And if we're just counting, we just say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And since we're going at that, we may as well go backwards and say 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and back to 0. <clears throat> Usually we do body geography first, but let's just rearrange it for today. We'll start with uh, counting, and we did up from 10 and back from 10, and now we can count to 100. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's your homework over the weekend, three day weekend. Just count to 100 as many times as you can until you have it nailed down tight. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 
17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, <clears throat> 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, the only 10 left, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. We made it again, all the way to 100. And now counting by tens, 10. Show me 10 fingers. Show me 10 more and say 20. Show me 10 more and say 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. One more time by tens. This time I'm going to use one finger at a time. I'm going to pretend that there's 10 in there. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Here we are. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Blast off. Okay. Um, I guess we'll go on with Betty Botter and then go back to body geography. Po oh. Remember? Here we go. B -b 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 Practice your b -b 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 sound. B -b -b Betty Botter bought a bit of butter. But, she said, this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, then my batter will be bitter. So Betty Botter bought a bit of better butter, and she put it in her batter, and her batter was not bitter. I'm going to count how many b sounds there are in that. You can count with, let's see, b Betty Botter bought a bit of butter. But she said this butter's bitter. If I put it in my batter, then my batter will be bitter. So Betty Botter bought a bit of batter butter and put it in her batter and her batter was not bitter. Oh my goodness. That worked out nicely. I just remembered I better do this. Ninth day of school. And these we can count by fives. I can count them all up and count them. First I'll do it that way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. If I count them that way, that works fine. Of course, I already know that this is five, the same way I know that this is five. So I could just say five, and then start counting. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That works too. But there's even a faster way, which we talked about last week, because we know that this is five, and this is five, and we know that all together we have 10 fingers. We can count and check if we want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
I already know this is 5 and all together is 10. So I could just say 5, 10 and skip all the 1s and 2s and 3s and 4s and 6 and 7 and 8 and 9. It's so much easier and faster. 5, 10. 5, 10. And then if I add, if I say that's 10, then I can start again. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. But if I can remember the sound of counting by fives, 5, 10, I can probably keep on going and say 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 5, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 5, 10, 15, 20. And now I've learned to count by fives, and of course I can keep right on going on up just like I can with the tens. So that is a good skill to have. So fives and tens and backwards and forwards, and we have a special treat going to happen in a minute. When I hear that bell ring, I know that it's time to go outside. So we'll listen together for the bell. Because something interesting is going to happen outside today. All right, because it's somebody's birthday. Head standing up, ready to go. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. I just heard the bell, so I will take you outside and see what is happening. Let's see what is happening. And I see many people across the Pico. Can you see Auntie Cheyenne and Auntie Emily? Wait for Greg. Wait for Greg. Ah, ah, ah. Good morning, Kona Pacific. Good morning, Mr. Learned. Good morning, all students on Zoom. Good morning, Mr. Learned. Today is a special day. It is not just Aloha Friday, but it is the day before our kupuna our elder of our community turns the great number of 76. And we are all here to wish him a happy birthday and thank him for all of his long, long years of service to our school. Let's sing together. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dinkle Barrow. Happy birthday to you. Of honor. And so, 
I think this is a great preliminary for a return party. Probably, maybe. <laughs> we'll look you. forward to it. So the red one is hibiscus and lemongrass, oh, and the other one is Tulsi and mamaki. Great. From our land. That was very special. Very happy to help make that happen. Uncle Barrow has been working at our school since I was a little boy. Well, no, since I was a young grown-up. He's been here longer than anybody else. So it's really special to honor his birthday. 76, 76 years old. I will write that number on the board. Very big number. <laughs> 76. 76 years young. <laughs> 76 years young. 76 years old. Yes, he is. All right. Now, in Hawaii. Ready? Standing up. Put your hands on your head and po o po o hivi kuli ba bye. Po o po o hivi kuli ba bye. Po o po o hivi kuli ba ba he malama kokino. Mm, uh, let's see if I remember it right. Ma ka wa ha mana mana li ma ma ka wa ha mana mana li ma ma ka wa ha mana mana li ma he kalama malama kokino. I hu ni hu leve kokino. I hu ni ho leve kokino. I hu ni ho leve kokino. E malama kokino. Well, that's that. And we have a whirlwind of things happening this morning. We have two visitors. First will be Auntie Jackie, and then we have Auntie Cheyenne. Good Jackie. morning, first graders, first grade friends. Mm -hmm. Off with that for now. Good morning, Mr. Good Coulter. morning, Auntie. Good morning, first graders. Oh, come up here. I love birthdays. And if you may have seen, this morning when I heard about the birthday song, I thought, what can we do for Uncle Barrow? So that was what I went into the garden thinking about. And so I looked all around, I started smelling and pinching and smelling and pinching, and I thought, let's make some tea for Uncle Barrow because he loves the land and he loves tea and he's taught me so much. So what I did was I brought in a bundle of the tea to show you guys, and um, I think that's all I'm gonna do today is just talk about the tea and show you the flowers on some of the tea. So this one is called Holy Basil. And even if you don't remember the name, you might remember that it has cute little flowers. And when you smell it, the smell is distinct. Let's put this flower in your flower vase today. Another plant I picked is um, red basil, and that's got quite a strong flavor smell. And right at the tip here, those flowers are trying to come out. <sighs> and I went for more leaves in this hibiscus plant. And this hibiscus plant, when we put hot water on it to make tea, makes the color of the water a certain color. I'm thinking you might imagine what color this one would make your tea. And this one, it doesn't smell as sharply as the other ones, but it's got a tang. So I washed my leaves. Mmm, that's really like got a nice tang. That's how many leaves have we seen so far? One, two, and three leaves. We've been looking at three different ones. 
I got two more leaves to show you about the tea. And this one, do you know this one? It's making small berries right now. It has a red stem when it's young. This one is called mamaki. This one has lived in Hawaii since it was born. And it was in Hawaii for thousands of years. This one is very yummy and um, more neutral, not as tangy. And the last leaf, it looks a lot like grass. The flavor comes from the grass, but also the flavor comes a lot from this part where it meets the ground. It's very bulbous. And this one, I washed it. Mmm, this one is called lemongrass. Ooh, this one's very pungent and nice. You put all those leaves together, you put them in a pot or a glass, put hot water on it, wait a little while. Mmm, it's good tea. So the tea's out in the Pico for a little tea party. I invite you to have a tea party with your family this weekend. Maybe you can find some leaves in your garden, and if you don't have that, you could get a tea bag from your house and get some help for the hot water. And enjoy a little tea party. It's a time to like rest. And maybe you could bring your teacup out into the garden or out on your lanai to look at the clouds. On Aloha Friday, we start thinking about ways to like think about our week, relax a little. So my Aloha Friday to you is think about tea, and we will see you next week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know what? It makes me think your presentation and your presentation out there reminds me of something I know very little about, uh, the Japanese tea ceremony. Mm. In Japan, of course, Japanese culture is very prevalent here in Hawaii. Mm. So I wonder, it makes me think, I think I will find out a little bit more about that. And I somehow am guessing that the honor which you were showing Uncle Barrow is really the spirit of that tea ceremony, probably the beginning. Ooh, thank you for pointing that out. Uh, so thank you for bringing that. And um, it's so pretty to see it there with the sun shining on it. And that was some, one of my effort. And the other one was that he gets to see all the leaves in the basket like you guys can see it right now. Have a good weekend. Here's our next visitor. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Auntie Cheyenne. Auntie Cheyenne. I've asked Auntie Cheyenne to come and show you something. And I am not 100% sure what she's going to show you, but we will find out. Oh, hello, first grade friends. I am so excited to be a part of your class today. As you can see, I've got some fun stuff. So, Mr. Coulter invited me to join in on Fridays so we can do a little, maybe some sciency fun stuff. So I kind of thought last night while I was thinking of what to do with you guys, I was like, you know what? I think we're gonna start calling this Fantastic Fridays because we're gonna be doing some fantastic things that are gonna make you go, oh, no way! So, today, I have, and this is something you guys can do at home, um, as long as you have the materials or can scrounge them up, find them anywhere. You can do this all on your own. So first, we have two jars of water. Count them two. And then next, I have two different paint colors, but we're gonna do this without the paint first, then we're going to bring it in for the second time we do it. Next, we have two sheets of paper. So, first things first, I'm going to take the paper and I'm going to fold it up. And it's okay if it's not perfect. You can like crinkle it up, make it all fun. Now, I'm going to put one end in one jar of water. And we're going to put the other in the other jar of water. Now sometimes this works if you can like set it up a little bit higher. So I'll just hold it today. <laughs> Mr. Coulter's helping me out. There we go. Okay, now one side can be fully in the water. So I don't know if you guys can see too well, but one side of the paper is all the way down here inside the water. Now we're gonna let it sit for just a minute. Oh, thank you, Mr. Coulter. That probably is so much better for you guys. Can you guys see it now? Oh yeah, that's way better. So, as this side is down here in the water, we call this the traveling water. Because what happens is the paper, it's gonna start soaking up all this water and it's gonna make the water magically go all the way up the paper to the other side. And then we can let it kind of drip out on this side. Now, it kind of takes a minute, so you might not be able to see it right away. 
But if you do this at home and you let it sit for a while, maybe you go play, go read a book, um, go outside and look at the clouds, make some tea like Auntie Jackie suggested, something. And then when you come back, you're going to notice that the whole paper has gotten wet. Now I wonder why that is. We'll have to come up with some answers and then afterwards we can maybe talk about it. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the, when Auntie Jackie um, brought her soil and you helped prepare all that soil, I know. She had some soil in a pot and it just poured out in a pile. Um, but then when she got it wet, she turned it over and it was like a sandcastle. And I'm sure the children know just by practice how the water somehow helps the sand stick together. It reminds me of this for some reason. So you can see here, it kind of starts suction cupping almost. Like the water kind of goes and it scoops it all together just like how we do with the soil. Now, I brought the color to kind of help you guys see the water travel. So, we pour a little bit of water, or a little color in here, and if you at home, you know, don't want to use paint of any sort, you could also um, try to use maybe food color. That works too. Then you put it in there, give it a little swirl. Or even the water, if you cook some red cabbage, the water that's left over from that. Ooh, I bet Auntie Jackie is tea too, that red leaf. That would probably travel up and make it red as well. So I think maybe, Mr. Coulter, we could let this sit and yep. maybe check back in with it um, maybe a little later on today in your guys' lesson. Um, and we'll have to see how far this water and the color starts traveling all the way up. And I wonder how many of you think it might travel all the way to the tippy top? Or maybe it'll stop here halfway? Or maybe it won't go anywhere? We'll just have to wait and see. But we are going to be doing more sciencey fun stuff on Fridays, and I'm very excited to be a part of it, friends. So, Mr. Coulter, is it all right if we, we yeah. let this sit for a little while? Absolutely. All right. It's an experiment, and sometimes experiments have to be Good let time. alone for a while, and then we'll come back and check it. So, and I had, like we said, we had two of everything, so we could do this twice, but I think we're going to let this one sit, and then um, maybe we'll try, try the other one later on. Or maybe you guys can try two different jars at home. Okay? Well, thank you, friends, for welcoming me to your class today. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your Friday. All right, Mr. Coulter, thank we'll you. leave this for you. Yeah, I can take it from there. <laughs> I think I'm going to move this over onto this other one here. Like that. some more things to talk about today. Let's see if we get my mind together here. Okay, so going back a few days, um, sometimes I like to do a little math uh, that I, you have to listen very carefully to, to hear, to count. So instead of just telling you it's five marbles or three cats, um, I'm going to tell you this is how many times the bear who went and found the beehive, this is how many times he got stung. See if you can hear how many times. Are you counting? Did you hear how many that was so far? Okay, count in your mind, or you can count out loud as I keep on going. That's how many times the bear got stung right on his nose. I'll do it one more time. Ready? Ready to count? That was the same number of times, but I made it sound a little different that time, didn't I? One more time, here we go. Gotta go a little faster this time. That's half of them, here we go, ready? Okay. 
Well, if you were counting, if you could hear that, it was this many times right on his nose. But I think he kind of deserved it for messing up the beehive, don't you? All right. Um, so Uncle David taught you the bear walk, and I hope that you have been doing that. And I wonder if anyone has discovered that you can do the bear walk forwards and backwards. I think bear walking is fun, and I can go forward. And I can go backward. But this time I have to look under my legs to see where I am going. Yes, forward bear walk. And if you've got the skills, you can go backwards if you're looking where you're going. Don't try to look that way. Don't try to look like that. Look upside down underneath as you go. And that is a good trick to know, <laughs> believe it or not. All right. So I hope you did that with me because you've been maybe sitting and listening for a while. And now I'm going to tell you another story. So long ago, best beloved, when all the animals were wild and not one of them was tame, the man and the woman were also wild. So terribly wild. There was wild animals in the wet, wild woods, and they all just lived in the wet, wild woods together. There was a wild sheep and the wild pig and there was a wild horse, and there were wild cows, and there were wild dogs, and wild, the most wild of all was the wild cat. Well, they were all terribly wild, but the woman had a different idea. She thought, you know, I don't like these wild, wild ways. I don't think it's very nice to sleep in a wet, wild pile of leaves. I think I will find a nice dry cave for us to sleep in because we will be more comfortable and happy. So she found a nice dry cave and she strewn the floor with uh, clean sand and said, now we will keep house. And the wild man came in out of the wild wet wood and lived together with the wild woman. Well, she hung in the front of the cave horse skin, the skin of a wild horse with the tail pointing down that the man had hunted. And in the back of the cave she had a fire to keep warm and to cook their food. Well, they cooked a wild sheep and a wild, and they were eating wild mutton. And she pulled out from that wild mutton the shoulder blade bone big wide shoulder blade bone and she looked at the markings on it and she made the first magic of the whole wide world and she sang a song and made this magic with the blade bone of the sheep and the markings upon it and she smiled to herself and the smell of the cooked meat wafted through the wet wild wood and the animals deep in the wet wild woods wondered what was that smell and what was that light and why was it in the cave? The wild horse stamped his foot and wondered what is that wild smell coming from the wild cave that the wild woman and the wild man had made? No, I wonder if any good will come of it for us. I will go and look and see and tell. Wild cat, come with me. The wild cat said, oh no, I am the wild cat who walks alone and all places are alike to me. So the wild horse and the wild dog, the wild dog decided he would go. So the wild dog asked the wild cat to come and the cat refused and the dog said, well, we can used his nose to push up the skin in front of the cave and see what was going on. And the woman laughed. She looked at her blade bone. 
And she laughed and said, wild animal from the wild wood, what do you want? And the wild dog said, what is that smell? And she laughed again and she threw one of the bones, a leg bone of the mutton of the sheep to the wild dog that was so roasted so well and the wild dog gnawed on it and enjoyed it greatly. Give me another. And the wild woman said, Well, I'll make you a bargain, wild dog. You go with my man when he goes hunting and help him. And guard this cave at night, and I will give you as many roasted bones as you need. The cat had snuck along behind and sat where he could hear everything. And the dog said, Okay, I will guard the cave at night, and I will hunt with your man during the day. If only I can have those yummy bones. And the cat said, that is a foolish dog. And he walked away through the wet wild wood with his tail in the air, but he didn't tell anyone. Well, next, when the man came home that night from hunting, he said, what is wild dog doing here? And the wood woman said, hmm, his name is no longer wild dog, but First friend, he will go with you hunting when you go hunting and will guard the cave at night. Well, the next day, the man and the dog went hunting together, and the horse out in the wet wild woods stamped his wild foot and wondered what had become of wild dog. Meanwhile, the woman went down to the meadow and cut the grass in the wet meadows, and she brought it back to the cave, and she laid it out to dry in front of the fire. And the smell as the grass dried smelled like new mown hay and the horse stamped his wild foot and wondered, what is that smell? Well, the horse went to see and asked the wild woman, the woman, what is happened to wild dog? And the woman laughed and said, you did not come here to wonder what happened to wild dog. You came here for the smell of that grass, didn't you? And the wild horse said, yes, I did. It smells delightful. Give it me to eat. And she said, if you wear what I give you, then you may eat the grass three times a day for always and always and always. And the horse bent his head down, and the woman put over his neck a halter that she had braided from leather. And he wore it, and the horse wore it around his neck and ate the grass. And when the wild man came home and asked, what is wild horse doing here? She said, his name is no longer wild horse, but his name is now first servant. You may ride upon his back and take him when you go hunting with wild dog, and he will serve you for always and always and always. Well, the next day, the man took the horse and dog, and they went out hunting again. And out in the wild wood, the wild cow wondered what had happened to wild horse and wild dog. And the wild cow walked through the wet wild wood and trying not to get his horns stuck in the trees and walked all the way. And the same thing happened again. And this time again, the cat was listening and thought, hmm, what a foolish horse, what a foolish cow. And that is a wise and clever woman, but not so wise and clever as me because I am the cat who walks alone and all places are alike to me. Well, wild cow ate the wild grass, and when wild man came home and asked, what was wild cow doing here in our house? And the woman said, her name is not wild cow anymore. Her name is first giver of good things, and every day I milk her, and we will drink the milk and enjoy, and I will take care of her while you are out hunting with first servant and first friend. And the cat snuck away. Well, all 
the wild animals stayed in the wild wood and the cat waited to see if some other animal would come. And the woman had sung her magic with the blade bone three times and had put it away. And the wild cat decided he would not come. So the wild cat came and looked into the cave. And the woman laughed and said, what do you want, wild thing, from the wet, wild wood? And he said, what has happened to wild horse and wild dog and wild cow? And she laughed and said, they are our friends and servants and givers of good things, but I have no need for any more servants or givers of good things or friends. You go and walk in the wild wood by your wild self because all places are alike to you. And the cat pretended to be sorry and said, well, I would like to come and sit in your cave. And the woman said, go, you are the cat who walks alone. I do not need anyone else here. You are very wise, said the cat to the woman, and you are very clever, and you are very beautiful. And the woman said, I knew that I was wise, and I knew that I was clever, but I did not know that I was beautiful. So because you have said that, I will make a bargain with you. If I ever say a word of your praise, then you can sit here in the cave for always and always and always but I never will say anything nice about you. And the cat said, well, what if you say two words in my praise? And the woman said, that I shall never do, but if I say two words in your praise, then you may sit up close to the fire for always and always and always. And the cat said, and what if you say three words in my praise? And the woman laughed and said, that I shall certainly never do. But if I perchance did, you may drink the warm white milk from first giver of good things for always and always and always, three times a day. And the cat looked up to the horse skin that sat at the mouth of the cave and the fire that sat in the back of the cave and the clay pots that sat holding the milk by the fire and said, you are witness three things that I will get if she says one word, two words, three words in my praise. And the little bat who hangs upside down at the top of the cave listened and heard. And the cat went away, walked through the wild wet wood by his wild lone self. And the woman forgot about him because all places are alike to him. Well, the bat came and visited the cat every day. Only the bat knew where the cat was hiding and gave him news of the cave and the woman and the man. And once he came and said, there is something new in the cave. There's a baby and he is fat and pink and very dear to the woman who is very fond of him. Well, but what is the baby fond of? asked the cat. Oh, the baby is fond of things that are soft and things that tickle. And he is fond of playing and of sleeping with something warm cuddled in his arms. Hmm, my time has come, thought the cat. And so the cat went back to the wild, through the wild wet woods by his wild self, with his tail held high and looked into the cave, and there the woman was, cooking and working, and cleaning and making things, and the baby was crying. The woman could not make the baby stop crying and put the baby outside the cave and gave him a handful of pebbles to play with, but still the baby cried. Well, the cat walked up to the baby and rubbed his side along the little baby's knees and walked under the little baby's chin and tickled the baby's 
neck with his tail and put his patty foot up on the baby's cheek and the baby cooed and the baby giggled. And the bat came in and said, oh woman, something from the wet wild wood is playing with your cat, with your baby. And the baby is laughing. Oh, a praise on whatever that animal is that is playing with my baby, for I am very grateful. Whoosh. The skin that hung in the mouth of the cave suddenly blew down because it remembered the promise the woman had made. And as the woman picked it up to hang it back up, lo and behold, there was the cat sitting comfortably inside the cave. And the woman said, Oh, cat, you have come in. I see, and I have kept my word. Well, I think it's kind of noisy outside. I'm just going to close the windows. Wait, I'm going to close the windows. The cat came and sat inside the cave. But then the baby cried some more. The woman could not keep him from crying, and she took up her spinning wheel and began to spin wool from wild sheep into yarn make things with. But still the baby cried because the cat was gone. And the cat said, take a little bit of your yarn and tie in the end of it a little whirl and pull it along the floor and I will show you a magic that will make your baby laugh as loudly as he is crying now. And so the woman said, I will try it, but I will not thank you. So she tried and she pulled it across the floor and the watched it, and then pounced on it, and then battered it back and forth, and then flipped upside down with it, and pretended to lose it, and found it again. And sure enough, soon enough, the baby was laughing as soon as he, as much as he was crying, and the woman could not, did not think, and suddenly said, Cat, you are so clever that you have made my baby cry, and whew, the fire remembered, and the smoke came down from the roof, and and when the smoke cleared, lo and behold, there was the cat sitting by the fire, as cozy and comfy as can be. Well, the woman could not believe that she had said a second word of praise, and sure was sure that she would never say another. She took out her magic blade bow, and this time she didn't sing a magic, but she said a quiet magic to herself. And the baby on to sleep, holding on to the cat, who was purring, 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 low and loud, loud and low, and the baby fell asleep for a long while. The woman said her magic, and it became so quiet in the cave, so quiet that a little mouse came out from the corner and ran across the floor and startled the woman jumped up on a bench and pulled up her hair that she was afraid the mouse might run right up it as you or I might. And the cat jumped and caught the mouse and said, is this mouse part of your magic? And the woman said, no, certainly not. And the cat said, well, then it will do you no harm if I eat it. And she said, certainly not. And so the cat ate the mouse all in one bite and the woman said without even thinking cat you must be clever that you could catch that mouse not even first friend was quick enough to catch the little mice and at that moment crack one of the clay pots that holds the milk broke and lo and behold there was the cat lapping up the milk that lay in one of the shards of the pot. And now, for always and always and always, the cat is allowed to drink the warm, wet, white milk in the cave and sit by the fire. And it was very satisfied with his bargain. The woman did not tell. But he also said, but I am the cat who walks alone. And when I want... I will go wherever.
whatever I want. I can walk by my wild self through the wet wild wood because all places are alike to me. And the woman didn't tell man or first friend what he had, the bargain that she had made with the cat because he was, she was not sure that they would like this idea. So she went in and when they came home, the cat came back and came and sat by the fire and drank the warm milk. Said, what is the wild cat doing here in our home? And she told them of their bargain, and he said, Well, you did not make that bargain with me, little cat. And I will took off he took off his leather boots and put them down in front of him and said, Anytime I see you, if you do not catch all the mice in our cave, I will throw my boots at you, and so will all proper men after you. And the cat said, to it, he saw the boots and thought, those look very painful if they were to hit me. I will catch all the mice in your cave, but in between times, when I want, I will walk by myself out through the wet wild wood, by my wild lone, because all places are alike to me. Well, the dog, first friend, came and said, and you did not make any bargain with me either. But I will chase after you, and chase you up a tree, unless you are always kind to the baby. And the cat said, I will be always kind to the baby as long as he doesn't pull my tail too hard. And in between times, I will walk through the wet wild wood by my wild lone, because all places are alike to me. And the dog said, well, if you hadn't said that last part, I might have closed my mouth for always. See these pointing teeth? I will, if I catch you, I will bite you, and I will always chase you up a tree if I see you outside the cave. And that is how first friend first giver of good things and first servant all became themselves. So it is, and so it was, and so it shall be. Well, I will stop there for today because we have run well over time, but I wanted to tell you that last story, and on the next school day, we will draw uh, a new picture a cat walking through the wet wild grass with a wild moon up above. And we will do that on Monday and I will show you what it looks like right now. Have a lovely weekend. We'll see you after the long weekend on Tuesday.